Okay, let's talk about Twitter. Recently, Elon proposed uh, charging people for their blue check. Used to be free, used to be just for the elites. But he seems to want to be putting a dagger in that idea. Anybody can buy a blue check. Anybody can be verified. Anybody can have priority for $8 a month. Now, a lot of blue checks have said, no, I don't want to pay for whatever reason. Uh, He seems really unfazed. It seems like he's trying to monetize Twitter. And we agree with this because we want Twitter to not be so beholden to the advertisers. We want their revenue stream to come from the users because you know then then they can represent the user's interests and not the advertiser's interests. Yeah, that would be more like the Apple model instead of the Google model. Exactly. But a lot of people are against it. I don't know why. Why should you have a blue check? Just because you wrote for some piddling news outlet who cares who cares what the we what, why does that even matter so uh, you know i'm relatively new to twitter right I, I only made my twitter account uh after covid so i'm not really like the blue check is something i noticed but i, I don't know too much about the history behind it and you know like how like do these leftists uh or you know blue checkers <laughs> Do they really think of it as like a, is it a really big deal to them? Like a status symbol sort of? Yeah, yeah, it is. It absolutely is. So, so do you think there are a lot of them who genuinely are against this idea just because it, it sort of makes the blue check accessible to I anybody so. that pays? Okay. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Uh, it's, a, it's a status symbol. It's a status symbol. It really is. And how would you how would you feel like if there's a status symbol could be bought by anybody for eight eight dollars a month? Yeah, well, it's not a status symbol anymore. No, now for people like uh, AOC, it's not for the status symbol aspect. Of course, like she has status regardless; it doesn't matter. But for these nobody journalists who have a blue check, think about a person you never heard of and has like. 5,000 subs and they have a blue check and you just wonder, well, who the hell are you? That person is so much greater because of their blue check than they would be without it. Hmm. So people like AOC, they would essentially be forced to pay the $8 if they wanted to stay a user, right? Because... <clears throat> yes, but so yeah, just realistic- not much money. Yeah, realistically, if you're AOC and you wanted to uh, you know, not pay and not have the blue check, Right. That doesn't. That doesn't seem um, like a. Uh, just doesn't seem like that would work in the in the long in the long. They'd run have because, to. They'd have yeah. to. Because they wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to tell who the real AOC was. I guess. Correct. Or at least you wouldn't be but, able to tell e- easily. You, you could no. tell, but just not easily. Right. You could tell by the sub count, basically. But we okay. So the main goal that Elon has is to mm-hmm. make more money for Twitter, and also maybe we speculate make Twitter less dependent on its advertisers and um, charging people for blue check verification is maybe one way to go about it. What's right. the Did, price point? $20, $8, I don't know. I mean, so he, he tweeted today, uh, Twitter has had a massive drop in revenue due to activist groups pressuring advertisers, even though nothing has changed with content moderation. And we did everything we could to appease the activists. Yes, Extremely yes. messed up. They're trying to destroy free speech in America. Yes. And, you know, and here's the thing. Elon has actually experienced a lot of pushback from people like Tim Pool and some people on the right saying, why are you talking to these leftists, uh, you know, and uh, why are you even listening to what they have to say? First of all, I think that he but, should okay, be, wait, be wait, able wait. to listen so, to everybody. Because he made out, he sent out that tweet about... Um, how he's meeting with all these different organizations. Yes, right? he's think, meeting yeah. with them. So, yeah. yes. Or I think he used the word talking or something. I, actually, he I don't can remember. meet with anybody. People should be yeah. heard. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't, I'm not against him hearing out anybody. That He should. He owns a company and he stated that he wants Twitter to be for everybody, not just for the people on the right. If you just want a place for people on the right, go to freaking Parlor, right? So... No, that's not what he wants. So he should hear these people out. Yeah. But here's the thing. First of all, he's only owned it for less than a week. So give him some time <laughs> to sort through these things. And second, if you think he's a smart guy at all, you have to 
you have to assume that he's figured that these things would happen. There would be pushback from the left. There'd be these people saying, oh, we don't want to, you know, the advertisers sort of pushing back. He knew this stuff would happen. My belief is that he needs to at least talk to these people to have plausible deniability to say, hey, look, here I was trying to work with people. Here I was trying to make a, a platform and consider all of your views and whatnot. And yet, you're pulling all your advertisers anyway. There's plausible deniability there. Now he can yeah. s- stress a, a different business model that focuses more on user end yeah, and try to push Twitter forward. And this is what he can sell to investors. Remember, the investors might still be stuck on, hey, why are you not trying to satisfy all the legacy advertisers? Why are you not trying to placate these people um, who used to give us money? Elon can't yeah. just say, no, no, fuck those people. I don't care yeah. about them. That's not really something you should be saying to your investors. It's possible, but I, I think the investors most likely knew what they were getting into. Yes, but he yeah. should still you know, be professional and do his due diligence. I mean, yeah, money li- is money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? and like listen to them. He should listen to these people, see what he can work out, see what he can't work out. So talking to people and listening to them is what he should be doing. And I understand if you bought Twitter in your imaginary fever dream where you have all this money and you just paid $44 billion for it. I'm thinking of Tim Pool specifically. Yeah. You, you think you'd do some stupid shit like shut it off. I don't know about Tim, that, but but he was saying... No, no, no. Know, at Tim, least, Pool, at least... Tim Pool literally said he might shut it off. Okay. But at least unban the B. I think is kind of. I think that was he made that. I, point yeah, yeah, well. that that that's yeah. fair. I mean, there's some fair points he rose he made, yeah. but there's some points that he made that are stupid. Like just shut it <laughs> off. That's awesome. Like, but I'm the one who spent 44 billion on it, not you. And also, it wasn't me that spent 44 billion. It was me and a bunch of investors. So I have to think about their interests too. I can't just say, oh, Twitter's bad for the world, so I'm just going to turn it off. Yeah. That's something that a person on the sideline who didn't just spend $44 billion. That's what that person could say. But you have no credibility because you, you have no skin in the game. You didn't just spend $44 billion on a company. Your opinion is fucking irrelevant, okay? I think this is a good time to just also comment, you know, something I've been wanting to say for a long time, which is just how much of an echo chamber it seems like Tim's uh, viewers are in. Because, you know, I, I think Tim made some pretty, um, well, you could easily disagree with a lot of the things that he he said about Elon and the Twitter acquisition, right? But then if you look at the comments on his videos, that they're almost all in, in agreement, you know. Yeah. Basically, yeah. they're they're all basically conceding and, and saying, oh yeah, you know, maybe Elon or Elon basically it's just like anyone else, um, you know. Once, Stupid. Yeah, he just cares about money. The guy blah, had blah, blah. one week. The guy had one <laughs> week. Okay. Just let him sort through this stuff. It's been one week. Do you really think that he bought it because Babylon B was banned? Do you really think he's gonna now that he has it, he's just gonna talk to some um advertisers, talk to some uh <laughs> idiot like uh you know, like leftists and just say, Oh no, they should be banned actually. Perfect. It's like he would have just let it be owned by whoever before then. Who cares? Right? Yeah. No, he's gonna. Oh, yeah. He needs a, but he needs process. He needs plausible deniability. He needs to say that. Look, I, I dotted my eyes and I crossed my t's. We have a process. Here is the process. You can point at it. You can point at the multiple people who have input and say, okay, the process is determined that the Babylon B should be reinstated. And boom, do it. But you can't. You can't just go willy nilly and just run it like you're a person on youtube you're just a twitter commenter who bought you bought twitter that's not what he is he he is now the ceo of a billion dollar company he has to act differently and And he didn't he didn't buy it just for you guys to be talking go to parlor if you want that if you look at some of his moves today i mean i mean some of the the firings that he did right I think that's evidence that he's moving in the right direction. I mean, you can also interpret it as, yeah, he's just trying to save money. But it's, I think it's positive evidence, right? He let go of the entire, quote, ethics, transparency, and accountability team. 
Good. Uh, Sounds like a dumb team. Yeah. He let go of the uh, entire curation team. He let go of the entire human rights team. Yes, I mean, we know these, all of these sound yeah, dumb. Yeah, exactly. We know these right. names are, are just bullshit names, right? It's right. Just, yeah, yeah. And, and the idea that he let go of the whole team is really heartening too because if he kept half the team, like, and it was, <laughs> like, the implication is, well, the team is still warranted, but we're just trying to save money. No, 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 no. This right. is a clear statement that the team itself is BS and doesn't need to exist. You guys can all go kick rocks. Here's your pink slip. <laughs> that's a good sign he's only had a week guys can we give him some time yeah 100 percent agree to, to to do what he needs to do and i can understand the criticisms that say well it's going to be till after the the midterms like, but that's just unfortunate timing because he bought it near the midterms and also he shut off people's um moderation power yeah. so people can't be moderating you know quote-unquote moderating yeah. In the Twitter there's, way. Yeah, there's a Hunter Biden laptop too. Yeah, we all know what Twitter moderation means. It means, ooh, the, the DNC and the DHS told me that Hunter Biden's laptop is misinformation. Banned. Everybody who talks about it, banned. That's their version of moderation. Well, Elon shut that off. So people can kind of talk, say what, whatever they want to say. I've been on Twitter. It's been awesome. I've called a man a man and a woman a woman many times. And I haven't been banned a single time. That was awesome. Okay. At what point would you start to lose hope? Like, let's say, let's say, um, how about two months later and Babylon B is still not reinstated? Well, if he puts in an actual process for people to come back and that process doesn't lead to the Babylon B coming back, then I will lose hope. Okay. Because whatever process he puts in should be the, the, the benchmark the baseline uh, judgment as to whether this process is successful or not, he should he should benchmark it as, does it bring back Babylon B? And if it doesn't, this is not a good process. That should be the way he comes up with this process. And you can say, well, that's um, kind of leading. That's kind of intentional. Yeah, it's intentional. So what? Who cares? That's why he bought this company, because you guys banned somebody who shouldn't have been, and he's rectifying that in the interest of free speech. So I have no problem with him saying we need the process needs to look like this and that process needs to let back people like the Babylon Bee. I have no problem with him having that policy. I wonder what, you know, what this process is going to look like ultimately. I want, you know, having a human moderation council doesn't seem scalable, but you know, I could be wrong. Maybe it's, you know, it's a combination Here's AI. what I think it'll be. I think it'll be mostly AI because there's just too much stuff to deal with. The human council will be for the high profile cases. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the high profile cases, Elon is going to have veto power. Right. That's, yeah, that's the one thing that I, it didn't, I don't know, smell right to me, but it, maybe having a council is the ultimate, you know, maybe that's what you got to do because. It, yeah. it just seemed like a very un un Elon kind of move, you know, sort of this, adding this sort of this red layer, tape. Yes. yeah, this layer. Exactly. I understand. I understand, but I believe he does need some kind of plausible deniability to say, "Look, there's a council that they share their input and look at the people on it that are from a diverse background with diverse points of view, and I took it all in. I took it all under advisement." And still decided to let the Babylon be back, to let Maybe. Trump back, yeah. whatever. But it's very important to have that step as opposed I'm to just saying, oh, I let whoever I want back. I'm wondering if, you know, how much plausible deniability actually matters. Just because, you know, Tim will often make the point that, you know, basically the left is going to be, is going to do the left. And it just doesn't matter how you try to placate them. You know they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna be the left, and I think there was a a good example of that. You know, with basically the uh, the tweet that Elon made, you know, about losing the advertising revenue, right? So he kind of yes, he yes, I agree. Tried 
he tried to accommodate them, and then they, or I mean, he says they tried to, he tried mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. uh, kind of compromise. And they I basically agree. Said, oh, I agree. The Elon's gonna, the left does whatever it wants anyway. Yeah. And Elon will do whatever he wants anyway. <laughs> but you still need to paper over these decisions with this plausible deniability, with this whole, we have a council, we have a process. It's all fake. I agree. Yeah. It's all yeah, fake. Yeah, yeah. It's all but fake. you need the fakery. You need the fakery for the investors. You need it for the advertisers. So, you need it for maybe Apple and Google to right. argue against them. Yeah. So then if Apple and Google, someone says to Apple and Google, hey, why are you platforming this fascist Elon Musk, whatever, they can say, well, he has a, a council of <laughs> totally representative viewpoints and that right, council, right. Had a, there's a process for them to have their input and they went through the whole process and it was determined after that whole process that Babylon B is reinstated, that Trump is reinstated, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we're covered. Our ass is covered. It, That's it's all hilarious. You need. It, yeah. This is this is totally anal analogous to, you know, what justifies the existence of uh, a lot of these consulting companies, right? Like, like so a lot of times these execs at whatever company, they will hire a consulting firm essentially just to get plausible deniability. Yeah. Right? They'll, they'll come up with some recommendation. Um, and then, yeah, it, it's, it, he can always say, oh, it's not my fault. It's, he can point to the, uh, the consulting company. Exactly. Yeah. I know it sounds dumb. And I know that if we, in our, in, our, in our dreams of running Twitter and ruling the world, we wouldn't answer to these stupid things. But the reality is Elon does have to answer to investors. He does have to answer to the real world. Yeah, it's maybe... so. I feel, yeah, these arguments aren't totally consistent because on the one hand, I, you know, I do think that the existence of a moderation council, it's not going to change the opinion of, uh, you know, let's say somebody was, was going to leave Twitter, right? Like ha having the council or not having the council, it's not going to change that person's mind. You know, they'll, they'll leave or they, or, or they won't leave. Just, you know, I'm thinking of a leftist. On the other hand, you know, we're sort of saying that having this council would be enough to sort of possibly change apple or google's mind right uh -huh. as if you know ha since they have this council now it's going to be harder to uh boot twitter off of their app stores but the truth is you know maybe they're going to do whatever they're going to do <laughs> regardless anyways maybe you know so but yeah I, I guess erring on the side of having plausible deniability can't hurt i don't think so